So I've learned to fall in love and build a beautiful relationship with the slave that's wired in my genes. Out of the seven plus billion people in the world, every single human being is wired with injustice in our genes. But the good news is we're also wired with justice. We both, we all have both. We have the genius and we have the trauma and fear. Scientists have now termed this conversation around soft inheritance coming from anything that was transferred through your inheritance. Epigenetics, epi coming from the Greek, around your genes. So you may not have had a slave in your past, but perhaps you've had a level of trauma that comes from a grandparent that was abusive. Or perhaps you were born, you were experiencing the 9-11, Twin Towers come down, and you were pregnant and you passed on through lower cortisone levels fear. Perhaps you were born in the Holocaust through a Holocaust survivor and you have experienced trauma. Or maybe, like in the Minnesota Twin study, you actually have no idea who your ancestors were, but you've experienced post-Holocaust trauma symptoms and you didn't even know your foreparent or your ancestors went through the Holocaust. The reality is that everyone inherits a certain level of both genius and trauma. Now the reality is that you can create a narrative to fully deal and switch on and off your genes. I want you to just imagine where you come from and think hard about where you come from. Your imagination can only take you so far. The reality is that there are four or five generations further back that you're not able to imagine what they went through. And maybe that's part of the genius and the majesty of what it means in this life. When Jean-Baptiste Lamarck in the 18th century came up with this idea of soft inheritance, long before Charles Darwin's idea of the theory of evolution. They didn't understand the word genes. They weren't familiar with the concept of genes. But we now know that transcribed, inscribed, scripted, and coded in our genes is an opportunity. There is programming inside of our genes that work between us and the environment. If you have a small child, you know that you did not condition your child to learn how to cry. Your child came out the womb crying from a genetic expression perspective. Any 16-year-old kid will know that when a young, beautiful girl walks by, a young, inspiring young man who be focused on his classwork when a young girl walks by and his body starts to shake, no one conditioned him how to shake. It's instinctual, it's genetic. And I've learned over the years that when I was six <laughs> years old, I didn't know that I had all of these competing forces inside of me. I didn't know that on a very deep, genetic, instinctual level, that I had all of this stuff. I didn't know that I had, in my subconscious mind, been conditioned with all of these sort of impressions from my parents. But beyond that, I had kunta. It's pain and trauma and fear <laughs> racing through my genes as well, competing for my behavior. So every time I face a situation, fear and doubt was coming from both a genetic perspective as well as a conditioned perspective. All the hypocrisy I saw in church from pastors who were supposed to be extraordinary, but I watched them be less. So I had that condition, and in my genes, I had all of this sort of trauma and fear. I had no way of knowing. So I went on this journey from a six-year-old, from this critical period, 
And as I was growing and I started to fall for some of these beautiful young girls, <laughs> when I was faced with an extraordinary beautiful young woman, I didn't know what was really influencing me. And some of the trauma I start causing them from the downtrodden, weak side of me. I wasn't aware. And there were times when literally my conscious mind I'd been scripted and told from parents. My mother had told me that you should treat a woman this way. You should treat a situation in society this way. But I had this trauma and fear in my subconscious as well as in my genetics that was causing me to do other harmful things to people. And as I stand here, I have to admit that sometimes the slave got the better of me. There were times when I physically cause people so much harm that I do not deserve to be standing on this stage. That I've caused people so much pain, heartache, trauma from this six-year-old age that perhaps someone should take me from this stage. There were times when I was faced with an extraordinary, delicate, vulnerable, good woman. And I remember doing it ridiculous things she would leave my place, and I'd feel beaten down like a slave. I'd find myself praying, Lord, I can't understand what's happening. And I would crawl, and I would ask, and I would pray, and I'd be like, why did I do that? Why is it that I don't have control in this moment? And I could feel Kunta's burden. And the sheer trauma from years, causing me to be expressed in a way that I didn't understand. Fortunately, I grew up, and I started to call on a strong narrative. And I started to get a clearer idea after my mother had a breakdown at 18 years old and I spoke to a psychiatrist and I said, what physically is happening in the mind? Why is it? What is the real issue? Why, do we, why are we not able to create conscious control in moments? I need to understand why it is my extraordinary mom who had this incredible ability to make things happen in our environment became weak as well. And the psychiatrist explained to me that when we're faced with genetic, we're faced and our genes are faced with an environmental condition, that we have the capacity to create an extraordinary narrative, to be able to face environmental conditions, to release things from our genes that have been transferred and scripted on a very deep cellular level in our membranes, out of the billions trillions of cells, that we have over 25, 30,000 genes that are coming from us. And we have the ability to create a narrative that can deal with the condition, but most of us are never even taught that we have this dynamic in us. We have the justice and the injustice. We have the Picasso and Kunta trying to fight for space to respond to the condition in the environment. So I set out on a journey to understand this, and I started to understand it, and it inspired me to understand issues like plasticity and the fact that we have the capacity to shift our minds, and if you're spiritual, you have faith, you can hold this narrative up. If you've ever seen yourself fall, it's because, it wasn't because you didn't have the faith or the spiritual strength to do it, you didn't know what was influencing your genes. So when I learned that, I was able to script a stronger narrative to be able to deal with conditions I was facing when my body was saying and doing weird things. I started to teach this to young people. I started to share this with young people. And by the way, anyone who's challenging this, if you're a man, there is a study called the penile blood response flow response study. You can attach a metal ring to the base of your penis. It has wires that go into a computer. Images are flashed across the screen. 
and on a conscious level, you can't pick up what's being flashed across the screen. But on a subconscious level, deep in your genetics, your brain can pick up what's being passed. And the fact of the matter is, what you respond more to is where the truth is. Most of us are afraid, we're afraid of the truth. We can pick up in our subconscious mind, in our genetic, in our genes, we can pick up through smell. Studies show that if you're single, that if you choose based on smell versus eyesight, the, better, the relation has a better chance of survival. So anyway, I started to share. I'm just going to help single people quickly. But I, I started to study this, and I started to share with other young people. I met this young woman in 2005, shortly after I came to the continent of Africa and South Africa. I started to share with young people like Kanye Sile the fact that she has both justice and injustice in her genes. Her family has experienced in Soweto the traumas of apartheid, but they've also experienced geniuses in her tribes. She comes from a culture that has mastery and genius. So I started sharing that fact you have both, and there's no need to deny. And this is, I told her how I fell in love with my Kuta, and I wanted to share her with her how she fell in love, how she should fall in love with her past on both sides. And she did. She found herself growing, along with some other volunteers that went in with her, with, with us to teach these young people. And she started growing and started to evolve, and she made it to the first cohort at the Uko Winter School. I saw her. I saw her recently in Cape Town. She's grown into this beautiful, blossoming, amazing young woman who's a second year student at the University of UCT, doing amazing things. Companies are already lined up to hire her. The reality is this, is that we need to stop lying to each other about where we come from. You may not have Kunta, but I guarantee you, you have some injustice in your genes. And you also have some beautiful justice. Embrace both of them, because in that abstract connection between justice and injustice, in that war for attention to face an environmental condition, is an opportunity to create a narrative that is inspired by the deepest injustice, but is also inspired by the beauty of the past. I call it a new genetic narrative. And when you rise up and you physically take control of your conscious narrative and say, this is who I am. I am a best-selling author. I have the capacity to be able to share clear insights to people around the world. And you own that. Then Kunta will come and support you, as well as the genius from your tribes and your past will come and support you. But if you deny that Kunta exists, he will push you, and his trauma and his pain will continue to push you. And you don't even know why you're responding why you're responding. And Lamarck, Darwin, and all of the science around epigenetics has evolved and is fully mature as it's continuing to mature. We're going to find ourselves in a world where we really start to appreciate that the ecosystem inside of us around our genes are designed to pull on every aspect of who we are. We're not just this, we're not just that, we're all of these things. The best part about being all of these things, I can celebrate the fact that before Kunta was a slave, he was royalty. Before the Picasso in me, before the Da Vinci in me, before all of the Biko in me, and all the beautiful in me, all of us are mixed with all of these issues and things. So I want to raise a fist to Kun and say thank you for being in my genes. Thank you for influencing me the way you've influenced me. I want to say thank you for sacrificing and making through the heartache and pain. But I also want to say thank you for the genius. <laughs> thank you for the spiritual depth. Whether you believe in Muhammad, Jesus, whatever you believe in, thank you for whatever you believe. Because all of this is scripted into a strong narrative can influence your genes in such an extraordinary way that you will find yourself responding to dreams and an imagination with full power instead of half power and no power. Thank you. <laughs>